motorcycle adventure Dirt Bike TV, supported proudly by Adventure Spec in the UK, Rally Raid Products, Giant Loop in the United States, Adventure Moto in Australia, Pirelli Tyres, Motel Oils, RK Chains and Australian Adventure Bike Magazine. We've spent a lot of time recently focusing on the build of our little red rooster, the mighty Honda CRF 300L Rally. And it's attracted a heap of attention. And the build is going pretty well. There's more to do, but it's getting there. There are a number of reasons why this bike is getting so much attention. It's relatively cheap. It's got a reliable engine. It looks the goods. And as evidenced by our build so far, it doesn't take too much to make it an adventure dragon slayer. But there are other key factors to its appeal. It's light, and it's one of the only smaller capacity bikes out there that's capable of fulfilling the role of adventure. It's abundantly clear from your feedback that you'd love the Little Red Rooster, but you'd like it to have significantly larger capacity say around 400 to 500 cc's with the same long service interval of 8,000 kilometers. But just hold that thought because there is an alternative. I had the great pleasure of riding with a loose group of mates and loose in a whole range of different ways who love motorcycle adventure and like taking on the tough stuff. We're certainly not a group that all like the same model or brand, although some would say we have a tendency to prefer KTMs or Huskies. In this bunch, there are a couple of us that have adventurized the mighty KTM 500 EXC. Okay, it's got a seat that's as hard as a piece of timber and the service intervals are a couple of thousand Ks. It doesn't have a cush drive, but I think they've proven that when it comes to the rough stuff, the KTM 500 is a bike worthy of consideration as an adventure bike build. There are a number of hugely successful adventures that have been completed on a KTM 500 EXC. My interview with Round the World adventurer and Kiwi Aaron Steinman is worth a look for those that don't think the bike is suitable. Now, whilst Connie and I have been recording in meticulous detail our build of the CRF 300, my mate Mark has been quietly and conscientiously working in the background to complete his KTM 500 EXC adventure. It's now finished and we catch up with him to see what he's created and if he's satisfied with his creation and does it meet his expectations for motorcycle adventure. Wow! You finished her. Woohoo! She's done. Yeah. Um, absolutely awesome build. So Dave, um, as you know, it's been a while, but um, I've been wanting uh, some kind of tower to put a couple of farkles on and some wind resistance um, for the lightweight adventure 500. And I found these guys called Adventure Men Cave. They're a fairly new company, I believe, in Spain. Um, I think they have some rally background, the uh, owners, and um, yeah mate, this tower is unbelievable. I think it's maybe two kilos or even less. Um, it has a sort of USB in here, put your GPS here, and it's also, you can have different angles and all that on that, and um, I think the beauty for me is it's plug and play. There are literally two bolts on the bottom, triple clamp, and two on the top. And I think they've got a new screen now as well, which is a little bit bigger. Um, but yeah, absolute quality, Dave. All stainless bolts, beautifully powder coated. And to be honest, I don't. The wind's fantastic. Don't feel the weight on the bars at all. It's got good light. I mean, after last night we gave it a, a run. It could. Yeah, absolutely. Last night I was. Yeah, I, I was blown away. Like, not only good light on the road, but just illuminates everything around and high up as well. So, don't need to improve the lights at all. Absolutely fantastic. So, we've got a little USB here, and when the bike's running, it's actually got a voltmeter as well, and an on-off switch as well, which is fantastic. 
Right. And you've got your GPS mounted here? Yeah, GPS mounted here and like I said, a couple of different positions. Um, the great thing is if you've got all other accessories, etc., you there's plenty of mounting points. So this is just for my sort of heated grips. Um, they have all the holes and everything for the indicators. There's a great safety feature on this that um, if you have a crash and you hit this, this actually breaks away. It comes right. off, essentially. Oh, wow. See, that's good. Yeah. So in a crash, hopefully you don't open your face or anything on that. So, But just, yeah, have a look at the work. It's, it's really yeah, beautiful. It's beautifully made. Yeah, absolutely. Looks great. Mark, tell me about this bike. Oh, my ultimate lightweight adventure bike. Um, yeah, Dave, I got a KDM 500 2017 model, stock standard, and I'm going to take you through some of the mods um, that I've done. First of all, obviously, adventure bike. We've got. Why? Why did you pick the KDM 500 EXC? I mean, it's a it's a big it's a big trail bike, mate. Well, I've tried a lot of bigger bikes. I've actually owned a 690, and I just found a little bit too heavy and get yourselves into certain situations where this will get you out of anything. Um, whereas the bigger bikes, you're going to struggle. So it's got the power and it's, and it's light. Yeah. Uh, but one of the things with these bikes, Mark, is the, uh, the oil. You've got to change the oil every, what, 2,000 Ks or something? Yeah, something like that. But what I've got is a bigger clutch cover there, which holds about 300 mil extra oil. So... Right. That's, that's fantastic and look for me I'm not going around the world so mm. the oil change is not a big thing. So when you're building this so what do you see it as a, a, a couple of day tripper you know or extreme adventurer thing what, where, do you, where do you see I'm, this sit? I'm going to say extreme adventure but we've done a week on it and no dramas whatsoever so whether it's highway or you know gnarly tracks it, it does everything. Look at your nugget. Yeah, well, that's a worry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so we'll I've keep got going. Your Kelvinator. Look at this. It's coming. What? What? You caught your eyes. This is my possum oh, burner. Turn it off. It's too much. Turn it off. Oh. oh, mate. And that's got the safety feature too that if you go ass over it, it goes right, straight off. It goes with you. Yeah, shoots you in the face. Yeah, mate, yeah, she's pretty good. The old Dolphin Torch, 12 volt battery, $9.99 <laughs> from Bunnings. Mate, you are set. So that's your adventure ride? It's done? Yeah, that's about it. Hopefully I'm not out there at night time on the two stroke. You can't <laughs> see through all the smoke. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time we've been stuck out there. <laughs> so what do, you, what do you think? nugget of Mark's build here. He's, he's trying, you've photo bombed him, so you might as well continue now. So, what, what do you think of his build? He's 500 here. Lightweight adventure bike is the way to go. There's no two ways about it. The CRF 300 has uh, proven that, that everyone's jumping on them like they're a block of chocolate. Everybody loves them. So, I love the 500. Yeah, you've got one stashed away somewhere. Yeah, I do, I do. Hidden away. Yeah, yeah, right. Don't tell Rosie because we're going to that Husky trek next week with the 701s. Oh, great. I love the Husky nearly as much as I love Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So, Mark, get back onto this <coughs> this talk. And so, what else you've got on the bike? So, you've increased the oil range. Yeah, so increased oil range. Um, bigger tank as well, 17 litres, which yep. gets me. 400 plus k's yeah so i'm more than happy with that yeah and i wanted to keep it really lightweight so i actually built my own sort of luggage rack here yeah because um, the frame the rear of the bike is a little bit um yeah weak. they they is he going over to do a crap he's too <laughs> all right keep going the um no the the, the rear of the 500s I don't believe can take much weight. It's, yeah. it's all plastic. They've shortened the subframe, so I've come up with my own. Yeah. So this is just sort of day tripping giant loop luggage. Yeah. So what's that? It's a giant loop. What, which one's that? Uh, the small one. Mojave, isn't it? That's a Could Mojave. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then you got this other giant loop. One yeah. Here. Again, just just small. Like I don't like 
I don't like a big tank bag, just pretty much minimalistic. Yeah. You don't need a lot of stuff there. Um, and to be honest, that's about it. Um, suspension got redone, obviously, for the weight. So how did, who, who did your suspension for Oh, it? Clive Ward from... What's his name? Motorcycle Biz. Oh. Clive, see, I got the plug in. <laughs> oh, yeah, look, there's Motorcycle Biz. And how have you found that? Oh, yeah, a absolutely spot on from day one. Yeah. Absolutely love it. So, um, on that point, we... <laughs> On that point, yeah, we've got an adjuster here. Oh, so you've got an X trig, have you? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look, have a look under there. See, that's an X trig adjuster, which is brilliant because you can change your weight if you're carrying a bit more weight. You can just up your spring load. Yeah. Anything else on this bike? No, just just sort of standard mirrors. Oh, I can it? see something, Mark. God, you got to know your own bike. There's a steering damper. Oh, okay. Dampener. Yeah. I could bring in some cows on. Oh yeah, Dave. Um, the other thing is steering dampener. I don't know. I, I've I've always liked them. This is a fairly Pretty significant sure. piece of work too. Bit out. Oh yeah. So these handlebars and that are uh, this company called Highway Dirt Bikes. They're in the US and they make sort of different faces where you can put switches and all that stuff on. And very very sturdy. I actually really like these hand guards. God. They designed. They Looks just like keep a bridge. Yeah, well, they keep the wind off your hands, so especially in those cold mornings, they, right. they're fantastic. And they actually have flip-out mirrors as well. Okay. But I prefer the ram mount. <laughs> You're looking what? at cows. What, what are they called? Those uh... Heifers? No. Oh, no, ram mounts. No, the mirrors. <laughs> the, the mirrors, yeah, yes. They got, but they got a name. They got a name, yeah. They're on the uh, table inside. We'll, we'll take them there. Oh, I'm seeing some more stuff, mate. You don't know your bike, mate. Have a look oh, at this. What else have I got? Look at the radiator guards. Oh yeah, okay. Jeez. Yeah, they've got these lovely force radiator guards. <laughs> yeah. um, everyone needs a carbon pipe guard as well. I was well. going to say you didn't talk about the carbon pipe yeah. guard. I think those are all just the fancy bits. I'm not sure if you need them on an adventure bike, but um, yeah. Yeah, it's really about just being as light as possible. There's another thing there that you've uh, that you could have talked about, but I'll talk about. And see, look at the weight on the back wheels there. That's to balance the the wheel out because there's nothing worse than riding an adventure bike with unbalanced wheels at 100 and 110, 100 k's. It just drives you nuts. Yeah, so dirt bikes they don't necessarily balance wheels, but if you're going to have an adventure bike, you balance the wheels. Mate, you've done a great job there. Yeah, thank you. No, I'm, I'm absolutely wrapped, and I, I don't think there's anything left to do, to be honest. Oh, look, here we go. Here's some more. So he's got a counter shaft sprocket protector. <laughs> you forgot about that, Mark. Oh, God. What that's else? It. I'll keep looking. Oh, look. He's got a... Is that, that's, not, that's not a KTM part. No, it's not, but the, the truth is, if my wife watches this video and sees all the money I've spent on the accessories, I'll, I'll be in trouble. Nugget, how's those cows going over there? Yeah, my darlings. They're like pets. Mate, they look like wombats, they're so fat. All Nugget's girlfriends they are. <laughs> Beautiful. Someone wants something. Oh, they want to feed. You know... Is oh, look, there's another thing. Is Nugget, this? there's another thing you didn't talk about. This is the toe strap when I've got to tow him with the husky. Yeah. When we get over 120. Yeah. So what speed can you sit on, Mark? Oh, I can sit on about 110 easily. So, yeah, Obviously, after that, it gets a bit more. But you can change the gearing, which I've tried. But for most of my riding, I'm happy with what I got. Yeah. What gearing do you run on it? Yeah, that's another question. I, I don't actually know. But... Because I know when I venture rode my 500, I had a 45 on the front. Mm. And no, on the rear. No. On the rear, sorry. Yeah, 45 <laughs> on the rear I had, and I had a, a 14 on the front. And I think you can get, like, that was the thing, and that's 160 kilometres an hour. But I, I find it better if you have a 15 on the front, and you keep, if, you, if your bike's going to be used for both, 15 yeah. on the front, and leave the 50 on the back. 
Because then you've only got to change the sprocket. You don't have to change the chain. So you just change the front sprocket around. Yeah. And you can still sit comfortably on 110 all day. See, that's what we're, talk, we're talking about doing with the CRF 300. I mean, when in a different power league, but the same thing. You just change that counter shaft sprocket to get you. Yeah, that's right. You start changing the rear to that extreme. Yeah, no, I, I'm you, currently running 15 on the front and 50 on the rear. And, like, if I was going on a real wide open... You know, fast yeah. ride. I'll just throw a 48 on the back. Snugget and I are talking about the desert again. So he's got his special desert headlight here. Yeah, we need to get out in the desert. All right, Mark, well, thanks for, for taking us around the bike. I've just noticed another modification that you forgot to yeah, tell us about. Oh, actually, I've as well. I've oh, have you? Well, I'll do I've mine first. Thing, but, um, so, this, so he's got, just to protect the Mojave, he's got a, a giant leap, heat protector there. Giant loop. Giant. Harold. Giant loop. Heat protector, Harold. Giant loop. It's upside down. Yeah. That, 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 that's pretty much the way I spend most of my time. Maybe we could just turn the camera around. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no. It's right now. It's right now. Dave, so probably um, actually one of the first mods any adventure rider should do yeah. is a seat. So, so you've got on the seat concept seat. Extra wide, and if you're Australian, you just you got to ride a sheep. It's, it's just the way it is. I thought Kiwis ride sheep. Mm. Oh, I found this odd. Like a seat, I've got a seat concept seat on my mm. 690. It's as comfortable as anything. It's like you're being to be sure to be sure. So you got a hairy, a hairy bit as well. Yeah, oh, God, well, I just touched where well, your nutsack went. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> Quick, I've got to wash my hands. Well, see, sergeant seats are getting a big, uh, a big following now. The sergeants, I haven't tried them, but I might have to. Yeah. Don't know, but really happy with this one because where your ass sits is real wide, but over here is actually standard no. width. Yeah, yeah, standard yeah. Standard width, so. God, Nugget, you're tempting me. I could see this as bike build five for me. You two, <laughs> you're influencing me. You'll need a triple car garage to hold all your bikes. You've got to start using them. Yeah, that's the trouble. As I'm getting been older. Out with us this weekend, instead, you're. Uh... I've got a groin injury. <laughs> Don't need to know the personal life. <laughs> Sonia was throwing me around the bedroom too hard. <laughs> well, that's what you told her. <laughs> she didn't I was, appreciate it's only that. Because I was picturing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, no, that's a good that's a good bill. But what I found is the older I get, the more bikes I have, and the less I ride them. <laughs> yeah. There's something wrong with that equation. There is something wrong. Yeah. We've all finished up filming. Are they IMS foot pegs you've got on there? Oh, yeah, Dave. They're beautiful. Oh, That's nugget. We got. He needs to do an apprenticeship with you about describing stuff. What do you reckon? Like, I'm surprised you forgot the Pirelli tyre on the front. Oh, he's got a Pirelli <laughs> tyre on the front. <laughs> Nothing like a punch of the sponsor. Look, <laughs> like, oh. I, like I said... Motors on the back. Oh. Like I said, if my wife knew about all the accessories, I'd be in trouble. Do you know so. how much these IMS pegs cost? I mean, they're really good. But... Oh, I think I was sponsored, Dave. All right, I don't okay. think I paid for those. Oh, good. All right. That's all right. And how did you get that? From the nose. Oh, Peppy. Oh, Peppy. <laughs> Takes that away all the time. He's saying, come on, Dad, you got to go. Mark, you forgot another part. There's your, there's your mirrors. Oh, yes. Not the bedpan, but the mirrors. <laughs> Those yeah. are the mirrors that go on the bike. Uh, yeah, thanks, mate. Yeah. Uh, God, he knows his bike well. Oh, that's a different bike. <laughs> <laughs> Over there. Oh, uh, no, it's gone. God. Oh, right. <laughs> that, that rattling you can hear in the background is Nugget. We won't be able to see Mark's lights with that smoke. The night rides can pass my bedtime, eh? Hey? Oh, no, Alright. Oh. <laughs> just get rid of the smoke for a minute. How <laughs> <laughs> are your, are your mission? So tell me tell me what we got on here on the front of this bike. What's this thing called? Oh yeah, it's uh it's a group of guys from uh, Spain and just stopped there because I, I can't actually fucking remember. That's all right. I'll just keep rolling until you do. Um, what an amateur. Adven Adventure Man Cave. The Adventure Man Cave, these guys are called. Adventure Man Cave. And they are... Uh, 
they make this great tower for the uh, 500 and it's pretty much just plug and play. Yeah. It's got a great little screen and... Um, yeah, we'll see it in the daylight, but at the moment we're drinking beer, eating meat and uh, testing headlights. And here we go. Holy snapping. What's that, low beam? Wow, that is serious, mate. That is hard. Well, they call man cave. Man, adventure man cave. Adventure man cave. It's a light-looking little unit there too. Yeah, no, absolutely sensational, Mike. Mate, what do you reckon, Nugget? That's a pass, isn't it? Beautiful white light as well. Bit posh for me. Oh God, it's gone out. Black. Yeah. I'd have to start the bike again if you want to. Do you want to start <laughs> yeah, the bike again? There you go. There you go. This is a bit of a rebel against all the twins being thrown out there this year. I mean, there's there's been about four different twins around the 800 to 900 capacity. What's going on here? You rebels, you lot. Well, I'm a rebel because mine's done up. When's yours getting done up? Wait, I, I actually find a, a, a twin bike is great if you're going to do long legs. If you're going around Australia or you're going across the world, a twin is great. But 90% of people who want to venture ride live in the city and you're only really going away for two or three days on the eastern seaboard where we live in Sydney. And you don't need a big bike that can carry 150 kilos worth of gear. You, you just need something small. You, you at least need three to 400, I reckon, kilometres in fuel range. And that's all you need. Carry a little bit on yeah, the back. absolutely. And, 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 hey, like, the speed limit is 110, so yeah. this puppy can do it. And, like Nugget said, if you're cruising around the eastern seaboard, most of it's probably going to be, you know, 90, 80 k's, maybe 100. You know the thing I don't understand? I mean, if you're a motorcycle manufacturer and you're hearing, if I put up a video on the CRF 300, a million people watch it. Well, not quite, but a lot, mm. right? So there's this real push for little bikes, for smaller bikes. The most popular size for my audience is 500cc. So this is the bike I, I that they want. Agree. This is the bike. So why don't they make an Adventure 500? I don't know because you've made the ultimate one, and it, it's not that radical, is it? No, not, not at all. But you just it, want a bit of wind protection, as does, Nugget says? Yeah, it does everything. That's, that's the best thing about it. But it what doesn't. it doesn't do is it doesn't cart your missus down to the <laughs> eastern suburbs of Sydney on a Sunday morning to have a latte. That's no, what it doesn't do. No, see? it doesn't do. No pillion pegs on this one. And no. that, that's what a lot of people like these adventure bikes for, is because they go with their, their friends up the Blue Mountains, but they also, they want to cart them around the city, their missus, yeah. and look cool down the beach at Bondi. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to get away on an adventure by myself. Yeah, and I, I, I've I'm got looking. no missus, so I don't need anything on big. <laughs> I've got my cows. Yeah, they look oh. very, I don't know what you've trained them to do, but they want it. <laughs> I don't know what we have to say about the eastern seaboard, like, because the Great Dividing Range, but I didn't even know no, where mate, it, no one's going to... I don't even know, know where it saying. starts. Does it start right. in Melbourne or does it start in Sydney? Does it run where? for 1,000 kilometres or 3,000 kilometres? Oh, it's 3,000. Great Divide. It's 3,000. Would it? But does it go from Melbourne? Mate, we've ridden all over Australia. We don't even know it our ends. geography. What's going on here? <laughs> yeah, I, know, it's I reckon we must be in the middle of it then. Yeah, oh, that's yeah, there, right there. Yeah, know. that's the Great Divide just behind us. Yeah. Nuggets Great Divide. So for our American friends, we've got this range that stretches the whole length of the east coast of Australia and it appears a few blokes have forgotten about its length. Well, I didn't is... want to say in case I was wrong because I know... Well, I a thousand k's is 2,000 short. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm used to being short. What, what 2,000 k's in Australia? <laughs> Nothing really. Nothing. Yeah. Well, Harold, there's a this, this is an old Mojave. Look how well. It, how long have you had this? Just talking about giant loop for a second. Honestly, I, I think probably ten years. Ten years. It, it looks bloody fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Actually, Dave, the first time I had that is when we did a trip up, up, up to up the Cape through. How long oh, ago yeah? was that? Nugget. Oh, the Cape. Right. That eight went, years ago. When Teddy was driving the truck. Eight years ago. 
Yeah. Yeah, at least eight years, so. Wow. Zips and everything still work. Yeah. That's so, a good testament yeah, to Giant Luke. Absolutely.